The 1911 is an inherently American tool that I believe every gun enthusiast should own. But maybe you find yourself in this position. You seek something better than a baseline $500 to $1,000 gun, but you don't necessarily have $5,000 to spend on a high-end 1911. Indeed, the question that I get asked the most in relation to 1911s is which one I would recommend that's in the $1,500 to $2,000 price point. Now, for a long time, my answer had been Springfield TRP. But the truth is that's a little bit of a negligent answer because it had been years since I'd handled one. Today, we look at the 1990s classic, the Springfield TRP, to figure out, was I right? Nineteen Elevens are on the 1911 Syndicate channel today. And For that once. makes me very happy because <laughs> I wish we got to do more and more 1911 content. This video only happened because you guys requested it. So if there's ever stuff that you really want to see, um, get down in the comments and talk about it because we do our best to fulfill your, not fantasies, but we tried to fulfill your wants and needs uh, as, as a man. So um, so today, rough start to the video. Yeah, rough your wish is our command. Um, so today we're talking about 1911. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about the Springfield TRP, which is kind of an oldie, which is also kind of what makes this fun. So let me give you some just kind of opening thoughts here. 1911s, um, more so than any other guns, whether it's single stack or double stack, cover a very wide ranging spectrum of price points, right? And 1911s really started, you know, shit, 400 bucks yeah. and range up to, um, I'll say 5,000. And I'll make a caveat. That's normal, nice yeah. 1911s. Yeah. Once you start introducing exotic materials like Damascus and- Meteorite. Meteorite and all kinds of crazy stuff, I mean, there's 1911s I know of that sell for a quarter million dollars. Yeah. I mean, quarter million dollars. Yes. Like, that's a house. Yeah. Like, that's a house, dog. Yeah. You know, and so, like, 1911s uh, have a very wide-ranging spectrum of prices. And the question, as we sort of alluded to in the intro there, the question that I get asked the most in relation to 1911s is, which one do I buy that's, like, 1500 to 2000 because right? I want yeah. something that's upgraded, but I don't have five grand to drop. Sure. So what's that kind of like mid-tier recommended 1911? And I think that also means that people could say, hey, I have one of these. And people are like, oh, shoot, man. Where if it's a lower tier, they're like, man, whatever. You know? I agree. You see what I'm saying? I agree. It, it skirts that line of, oh, dang, cool. Well, it puts you in the respectable category yep. where you're like, hey, you didn't like, you know, lose your shirt trying to acquire this unobtainable 1911, but it's like, this is definitely nicer than your standard, you know, whatever thing. You go, hey, that's a, that's a respectable gun. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people that want to be in that category, especially with a gun that has so much um, American heritage like the 1911. So the TRP has often been my thing that I've recommended to people of like, hey, look, I think that would be a good pickup in that price point. Sure. And 
So I reached out to Springfield and, and I just said, yeah, look, I got this notion for a video. I'd like to do it. Is there any way to get a TRP? And they said, yeah, we'd be happy to support. And so they sent out the gun. So Springfield sent out the gun. I've had some limited, but you know, some communication uh, with them. Um, and there you go. That's, that's the nuts and bolts of it. Before we start diving into the TRP, quick thanks to um, Segera. Our belt. Yeah, you got that bad boy on, right? Yep. I got one too. Multicam. Um, you multi cam black. I wear a multi cam belt on a daily basis. Total tactical asshole move. Um, no one sees it. But who sees? How do you know a bunch of ladies don't see this thing? Well, I know a bunch of dudes see it, but I don't think ladies see it. Well, there's a lot of dudes that watch the channel, and that's who would see the belts. Um, the code is 1911 Syndicate. You can plug that in at checkout, saves you 10% off their store and their belts. Um, they've got battle belts, aka called the Battle Wagon. Um, and then more EDC style belts. Check it out. We'll link a couple videos we've done on their stuff below yep. as well. Okay, so let's talk a little history before we actually jump into the features of the sure. TRP. The first thing I'll tell you about the TRP is it's the real freaking deal, man. And what I mean by that, okay, real freaking yeah, deal. Explain. <laughs> what I mean by that, that's a five inch 1911 government length that shoots 45 ACP. Kind of how John Moses, Moses Browning intended it That's to be. That's the real deal, how man. How God intended it That's to be. That's the deal, okay. right? And according to the vast majority of people that I hear chime in on this subject matter, they're like, look, man, if you're starting your 1911 journey, you got to get a five inch and 45. Sure. You know, it's just like, Fair that's that. the thing. Yeah. And while I could argue against it, I can also very much argue in favor of it. But it's yeah. like, so the, the TRP is that. Like, it's the real freaking American deal. Historically, it comes from an organization called HRT. HRT? Yeah, FBI HRT. What does it stand for? Yeah. What is it? Hostage Rescue... What's the T? Team? Is it team? Yeah, it's is hostage it that simple? rescue team. I thought it'd be like hostage rescue tactical. No, something what are you rather? doing algebra around uh, here? It's just uh. hostage rescue team. But they're high speed dudes. Um, so here's the deal. FB, it's it's the FBI's counterterrorism um, team, right? It's yeah. it's FBI's equivalent of like special operations. Yeah. Well, the Army's counterterrorism team helped stand up FBI HRT. Right. Right. So yeah. HRT is a high speed organization. Basically, what happened was what year was the eighty three. Uh, well, there was the, yeah, the 83, right? So it was the uh, Munich Games, there was a hostage situation. And what was happening was the Olympics were coming uh, to the US and the FBI wanted a federal law enforcement component that if we were to have a hostage scenario at the Olympics or whatever, hey, we've got this team that is designed to deal with something yeah. like that. Yeah. Much like you have, you know, CAG for the Army or, or DEV for, for uh, the Navy, you know, it's like... But hey, they couldn't H operate on U.S. soil, which right. is why the FBI had to do it. Right. So, yeah. you know, and that's where HRT came from. HRT specifically wanted a 1911 for their contract gun. So they put out the request, right, for a 1911 that would be their, their HRT okay. contract gun. Through a series of string of events, ultimately Springfield winds up getting that contract. Okay. The TRP is based on the FBI HRT 1911s that Springfield used to make. It's basically the same gun, okay. with probably a little bit less in the way of like refinement, fit, finish, stuff like that. Um, the thing is, you can still get those actual, to my understanding, I've never really looked this up, but I've been you know, told by the, the smart people that are like, you know, you can still find those HRT guns, but they usually, I think, go for like four grand or so. Oh, cool. wow. So it's like, hey, huh. you, you can go find those those actual like guns that were part of the, part of that program, but you just pay out the ass for them. Now, okay. Um, although I got to admit, I think four grand for an actual like HRT gun. I don't know that that would for me that would probably be like, yeah, it's that's okay. Um, I'd probably co-sign on that. You're a bougie bitch. But man. I'm irresponsible with money too, so don't <laughs> don't listen to anything that that I tell you in regards to spending your hard-earned cash. Um, so the TRP is the current production model of what would have been the FBI HRT gun. With that said. Let's dig into the TRP. Okay, before we uh, get into the TRP, if you guys are looking for any ways to support the channel, we've got Patreon. Uh, we've got people flying in tomorrow uh, to participate in our first Patreon only class. But we've got a link below, a bunch of behind the scenes content, giveaways. We do like special Zippo lighters. You get first crack at the whiskeys that we do, classes that we do. Like it actually is a pretty cool little community that we've got on there. And then beyond that, uh, 1911syndicate.com. We're a real estate business for those of you that don't know that. Or for those of you that do know us and don't call us when you need to buy a house, go to freaking hell, sir. <laughs> um, so. Uh, too too much? Well, I just was kind of tuning out, and then I just heard the aggressive go to hell. Well, you know? yeah. Hey, if you watch our channel and you don't call us when you actually have a chance to support us, go to hell, sir. <laughs> so we're just back in the rabbit hole. We're just spinning our wheels at this point. Um, so anyway, check that out. 
thank you, sir. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, let's talk about the TRP now. So here's the deal. We're just going to kind of uh, go through, you know, frame, slide, a little bit of features, a little bit of thoughts uh, as someone who has you know, uh, a, a decent amount of 1911s and double stack 1911s. I feel reasonably qualified to talk about this. I'd pistol. say you're a connoisseur. Yeah. So the TRP, first of all, stands for tactical response pistol. And the MSRP on this is $1,732. $1,732. So for those of you that ask, $1,500 to 2000 what am I buying? I'm not telling you yet that you should buy this, but I'm saying, hey, this is right in the middle of that price bracket that you're looking to spend. And I would also note a very good looking gun. Aesthetically, a very, very clean, good looking sharp, gun. good looking gun. Very, very good looking gun. I'm, yeah. I'm actually quite happy with the stainless, that I did the stainless uh, version as well. Yeah. So let's start with this, frame to slide fit. It's, right? It's nice. <laughs> um, it's better than expected, I, I, I have to admit. And that's not everything. Like we kind of start with this sometimes because it's one of the first things I do when I get a new 1911. Just kind of check slide to frame sure. fit, feel if there's any you know lateral or, or vertical play in it. And like this is a production gun. This is not meant to be an all hand fit you know five thousand dollar gun. It, it is a production gun, but I have to admit that the slide to frame fit was actually pretty tight and, and pretty solid. I yeah. was like, okay, I, I ain't got no issue with that. Pretty pretty smooth actually. Looking at the frame, we've got a forged frame. In a video that would have been out maybe a couple weeks prior to you seeing this, we talked about machining processes, and basically there's there's you know kind of the rankings. We go mim, cast, forged, billet, right? So a forged frame, as Springfield, um, you know, says ab ab about these. I don't know why I said says like that it's not true or something. The forged frame from Springfield um, <laughs> is a. I don't know why I went. It's to, been a long. I'm day. just a weirdo. Um, so the forged frame, that would be a good thing. Like that would be a good machining process. It would be considered a fully machined part, if you will. That's a good thing, right? That means, um, hey, it's not cast, it's not mimmed. Why does that matter? Rigidity of metal, as we talked about on that other video. If you want kind of a deep dive of that stuff, go back to the double stack 1911 buyer's guide. But hey, that's a good thing. I'm glad that it comes that way. The trigger, they rated it at four and a half to five pounds. I'd say, yeah, it's probably right in that four and a half zone. Uh, I know we're splitting hairs, but it is clean. It's a, you know, one of the things to keep in mind, it is more, this is a duty gun. Like, I mean, this is not hmm. meant as a competition pistol or anything like that. It's meant as a workhorse 1911 that can be a duty pistol. So it's never gonna have the two and a half pound trigger. That's not what you would want on a duty gun or a bedside gun or something. So I'm perfectly happy with that trigger. I think it's clean, it's crisp, it's very predictable. I've had no issues with it. So sure. A-OK -okay in my book. Let's talk a little bit about the checkering. So. 20 LPI. You know what LPI is? Uh, lines per inch. Hey, there, there you yeah. go. Go figure. You knew that, not HRT. You know? Well, yeah. yeah. Not, I don't. I don't research like law enforcement stuff. I re research the military stuff. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. See what I'm saying? You do, you man. Yeah. Whatever makes you happy. 20 LPI on the uh, front strap and the mainspring housing. Yep. Now, so when I say it's aggressive, and then front strap. There's um, no one behind the camera, so. It's aggressive. That right there. <laughs> it's real aggressive. It's in the category of, hey, I could do with a little less aggression, especially on that front strap where you're like, hot damn. I mean, you'll shoot a mag, it. you'll take your, your hand off and you're like, yeah, that is that checkering the, that is right there under my I'm skin. I'm not gripping it very hard. Yeah, I mean, it's it's super, super aggressive. So I if I had my way, I'd say, hey, we could, we could tone that down a little bit. But if this is supposed to be based on the HRT gun, then and if that's what the HRT gun had, because again, duty gun, glove, stuff like that, you go, okay, cool. I'll give you a pass if it's based on a historical reference. Otherwise, yep. hey, we could probably tone down the 20 LPI. But the good news though, that gun ain't going nowhere. No. If it's in your hand, it ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Okay, that, that thing is locked in. Uh, G10 grips, neither here nor there. They're fine. They're perfectly adequate. No real feelings on them. They're grips and they- And they exist. They work as grips. They exist. There you freaking go, you know? The Magwell, so this was um, a pleasant surprise for me, I, I, I must tell you. Um, specific, not that the Magwell exists, but that the Magwell and the grips are actually blended together to, to be how it's supposed to be. Oh, yeah. Um, if you were to go back, for example, and watch the Colt M45A1 video that we did, um, that hideously overpriced, Colt custom shop gun. 
Um, shame on my friend who I know will see this video who spent that much money on that gun. But if you go look at that, and we will also see you tomorrow for the Patreon yeah, class, my friend. I know. <laughs> um, so uh, if you look at that, if you look at the magwell and the grips, uh, that is what you don't want. Maybe we'll try to find a reference we can show here. As properly done, this is how it would be, which is, hey, there's no gap and there's no angle between the bottom of the grips and the magwell. It's blended together. It's flush. It, it, and like, it's not rocket science. Like, it, like th that is how it's supposed to be. And if you look, if you kind of look to see any light through the magwell, you'll see it's pretty tightly fit. Like you're yeah, not really gonna see like through through like these slots yeah. and everything, you're not really gonna be able to pick up much daylight or anything, which just means, hey, this was well assembled and you know, if it was hand fit, then it was well hand fit. Or if it was machined, then hey, you did a good job on the machining. Like, hey, nicely done, I yep. guess is what I'm saying. That is a, a small detail, but again, when we're talking about 1911s, it's a game of details. Yep. Like, that, like that's the game that we're playing when we're talking about 1911s. The Ambi safety, um, for me, I so this is a little bit of an unfair statement. I would say it's probably, for me, the weakest link in the gun. And here's the only reason I say that. I've had no issues with it, but it just doesn't feel like it's going to hold up to me. It feels like if I'm going to have an issue somewhere, that's going to be it. That said, I've had no issues. So it's not particularly fair criticism by me because it's like I'm semi-criticizing a thing that hasn't warranted criticism. Sure. I'm just saying in terms of a part and a component that feels like this might be the wink link. Wink link? Is that what I said? You did, but weak, weak link. Mm -hmm. um, feels like the safety could be into that category. Okay. That said, positive retention. I've had no issues with it. So it's like I'm kind of being a, you know, I'm kind of not being fair there, but just an you know, observation, if you will. Uh, this particular one is non-railed. They do have a railed version yeah. of this as well um, that you can do. That one's black versus this one being stainless. We call that a full length dust cover. Yes, that's true. Um, I'm actually more drawn to the classic non-railed version of this. Uh, I, I, I don't know why. I, I've, I've, for a long time, I've been very drawn to that pistol. Oh, really? I just think oh. it's a very good-looking pistol. There's nothing fancy about it. It's clean. It's straightforward. I, I like it. I think it's a really good-looking gun. Cool. Which is part of the reason I was kind of excited we were getting into this sure. video. There's no undercut on the... Uh, Trigger guard or the frame, I think that could, you know, again, I'm being nitpicky because I try to find uh, critical observations to bring you guys, but I'm just saying, hey, if there was an undercut uh, somewhere on the frame here, you get a slightly higher purchase on that frame. Is it a big deal? No. Back then, undercuts weren't a thing. Uh, you, you know, so. it's it's not a big deal. I'm just kind of looking for little things to say. I don't know. This might be your areas where you could make it a little better. But uh, I mean, again, I, I, I really don't have any issues with it. Um, on the slide, bushing is fit pretty nicely uh, to the barrel. It, it's not it actually requires a bushing tool to cool. get off. Unlike if you were to look at that Colt M45A1 or a uh, Triarch 1911 <laughs> that would have been the last time we covered Triarch on the channel, um, you could just press the um, the little plunger and you could just rotate the barrel bushing. Um, that's not good because part of that, that bushing is part of where that tight lockup comes, which is where your accuracy comes from. So the looser and the non-fitment of the bushing to the barrel just means, oh, you're gonna have a gun that's less accurate. Yeah. You know, so like that was actually a nicely fit um, bushing and hey, good job on that. Serrations, uh, it, it's almost gonna be just a eternal joke we make on the channel now. Yeah, they're serrations, they work. They do what serrations can do. Yep. It's very rare that I've tried to like press check on serrations and be like, this piece of shit serration, yeah. like, <laughs> like they do what serrations do. Like they're fine, they're bitey, they're grippy. They're, they're there they're, so they're, you they're can good. grab them. No problem. Uh, tritium sights comes with that. That's perfectly fine. I guess if I'm looking for uh, areas that I could point out, you know, critical observations, I would say, hey, on a duty style pistol, I would like to have a, a rear sight with a ledge on it. Um, just so that I could manipulate that off of a holster belt or something like that. Instead of a Novak style. Yes. My counter argument to my previous point is that on this particular gun in most 1911s, you could just as easily use the ejection port. Sure. Um, you know, so it's like, hey, this yeah. little nub that's here that on the ejection nub, port. That little off your shoe or something. Yep, yep. Yeah. As long as you can find something to index that on, you can use the ejection port just like you could use a, a ledge rear sight. So really not a big deal. With right enough there. force, you might be able to make it happen anyways. <sighs> I don't know. Should I, I try it? Personally, I don't. No, you should not. You should not. This, this is not my gun. This is dirty. Exactly. Yeah, I'll just try it on my boot. Exactly. It's my gun. One other thing that I'm not a big fan of, two-piece uh, guide rod. So basically, in order to take this apart, um, you have to put an Allen key in this 
and complete you see how that had threaded off yeah. a little bit right there yep. so i just need to tighten that that down but like basically you have to take an allen key unthread that thing which then frees up you to actually disassemble your gun okay um i'd rather have a one-piece guy rod just you know just just a better system um especially hey if this was a, a duty use gun it's going to be in the field and for, hypothetically i had to disassemble it it's like cool do i have an allen key on me um versus a gun that will not require that uh, just some kind of overall thoughts here as we start wrapping it up. As mentioned, great looking gun. Very much aesthetically enjoy this gun. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm happy about that. Reliability, hey, it's meant to be a duty use pistol. And uh, with that, of course, you want your gun to be reliable. I've had no uh, issues at all. I haven't had a single malfunction. Yeah. Uh, there, there was no break in period, which this wouldn't have the tightest tolerance in the world. It, it's, it seems like it's pretty good tolerance, but like it's not going to be, you know, crazy insane tolerance. Yeah, like but, a custom one. Yeah, but I've had uh, no malfunctions and I disassembled it, field stripped it on day one, put some oil on it, and I didn't touch it until yesterday when I got it cleaned up and oiled up for today. Cool. Because there's no point in bringing it out here and having it potentially malfunction sure not that i think it would but point being hey i threw oil on it once ran it until we got to a review day so it ran for a month on that initial uh breakdown and it's been completely good to go cool um kind of what to ref expect on the refinement scale uh i think i think you're getting what you're paying for there um there's gonna be i, th I think you are getting a completely fair product for what you're getting are you gonna get all the beveled and deburred you know edges and all that kind of stuff no not on a gun at that price point you know yeah it's not that you're gonna get hot spots but it's just when you're looking at the refinement scale of 1911s hey that's not a five thousand dollar gun so don't judge it as a five thousand dollar gun yep. judge it as a gun that's one thousand seven hundred thirty two dollars that's what it is. And I think it checks that box very well. And I guess I'm kind of happy to say that after a couple years of telling people I think a TRP is a good option in that price bracket. How do you feel about it now? I feel relieved yeah. that I wasn't like a total clown Chilling. who was like, oh, yeah. damn, dude. I was telling people to get some bullshit for the last two years. I'm like, oh, thank God this thing went well because that would have been really kind of a bummer. So... Look, it's an old school gun. It's been around for a long time, but it still feels relevant. It sure. still feels like a gun that even though it was really made like 90s, um, dude, it's still going, man. Yeah. It's still going. That's yeah. a completely relevant, real world functional gun. When I first got into the gun industry and was asked like, hey, 1911s, what's the go-to? Everyone said TRPs. And that was about 10, 12 years ago. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. So I've been very happy with it. So, I mean, I would say, you know, for whatever my opinion's worth for anyone who sees this, who's had that question, yeah, I'm standing by what I said there. Um, I think that's a great option. I, I would totally get one. And um, yeah, you know, freaking rock and roll. That's it, huh? Yeah. Right on. Now, I will tell you this one last thing. Uh, that may be a duty use gun. You could even CCW that. Sure. And hopefully your day never comes that you need to use it. But if you did... And it's a legally justified shooting. You want to make sure your ass is covered, my friend. Covered by who? There's a company, everyone, called Firearms Legal Protection. Um, I feel like I should do commercials for a living. I feel, I feel like I could really <laughs> nail it. Like you're good at it. With these segues and everything, I feel like I can just hit this. Um, but FLP, they sponsor the channel and the video today. Um, the code, just to give you that up front, it's just 1911. Um, saves you about a third off of their different tiers. They got a few different tiers. So if you carry a gun or even have a, a gun or weapon for home defense or in your vehicle, whatever it may be, um, hey, if you're in a legally justified self-defense scenario, um, they will cover the unlimited attorney fees and a bunch of different cool perks with that, the attorney hotlines, all kinds of different stuff. There's plans for if you just really stay in your state or if you travel or if you have family so you can check it out we got a link below yep. it's good service and been cool working with them so check it out and i think we're ready to freaking get the hell out of here and go party yeah let's wrap it up and let's go uh hit the bars man okay all right we'll see you guys at the bars thanks guys